Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Tim. I'm the author of the Penang Travel Tips website. I created this series of narrated walking tours to let you explore and discover places with me. In today's video, we will explore the southern coastline of Penang Island. It is one of several videos I have planned to produce. We started our walk at Clinic Desa Permatang Damalaut and will end it at Jalan Permatang Damalau. In between, we will visit the estuary of Sungai Ikan Mati and skirt the coastline of Teluk Kapol. I am taking you to places off the beaten path, places that don't appear on tourist maps. I hope that through this series of narrated walks, I can share with you the hidden beauty of Penang and other places that I explore. But before I go any further, let me first give you our starting point coordinates. Key these coordinates into your GPS, Google Maps or Waze to be navigated to Clinic Desa Permatang Damalau where we start this walk. If you wish to explore the area in person, you can use this video as your virtual tour guide. We are now walking through the village of Permatang Damalau. It's a village that is located right next to the Penang International Airport. Unlike settlements that grew organically, the present village of Permatang Damalau is a planned village. As such, you will find that the roads here are neatly laid out in a grid. In front of us is the path that goes to Pantai Essen, which I covered in an earlier video. I will leave the link in the description if you wish to watch it. When Permatang Damalau was first settled, the village houses were scattered randomly. But in the mid-1970s, there was a reshuffle to accommodate villagers who had to be relocated for the expansion of the airport. Part of the original village of Permatang Damalau that happened to be located right under the path of incoming planes had to be expunged. The villagers were relocated and some of them were resettled here. And the result is this neat village that we see today. Many of these villagers continue life as was before, which is to make a living as fishermen. They catch fish and prawns along the coast and at the estuaries. There are a number of rivers that discharge into the sea along the southern coast, and one of them is to our left. This is the mouth of Sungai Ikan Mati, and yes, that's the actual name of the river. As with the northern coast of Penang Island, the beaches along the southern coast is sandy and strewn with large boulders. However, the sandy layer is thin and underneath it is mud. I used to see mud skippers in the mud even though I didn't see any today. The island in the horizon is Pulau Candy. As you can see, the sea along the southern coast is shallow with gentle waves lapping on the shore. The coast is strewn with garbage. If you want pristine sceneries, look far, don't look down. As long as there is human habitation and people who need to make a living off the land, you will find garbage. However, it's worth pointing that not all the trash comes from the village. Some are washed ashore. On this side of Permatang Damalau is a bay called Teluk Kapol. Let me find a way to climb down from here to give you a closer look at the shoreline. Hmm, it seems pretty high. Let me find another way down. I'm going to backtrack to the main road now.
Okay, we are back at Lintang Permatang Damalau. This is the coastal road of the village. We'll try to get to the shore from here. You know, during the Asian tsunami of 2004, the whales came right up to here, carrying boats with them and depositing the boats on the road. I remember visiting this area a few days after the incident and it was a shocking calamity. But many years have passed and the tsunami is now a distant memory. The life of the fishermen has however remained unchanged and for many, it's still a hand-to-mouth existence. As someone who lives in Penang, I often think about how we can help the fishermen break away from the cycle of poverty. If people have little option than to live off the land, it often leads to overfishing and the depletion of our natural resources. Not only that, the more people are in direct contact with the environment, the more likely they are to leave trash behind. So, it's actually to the benefit of all if the children of fishermen are given more options in life so that they can break away from having to depend on the land Hello. for a living. Hello! Good morning! Tengok, tengok! Menoroka! I think I must be quite excited myself being a lone videographer walking along the shore. I want to show you how it looks like over here. It's low tide right now and you can see the coastal seabed. While the beach is quite nice where it's sandy, the seabed itself is shallow and muddy, so it's not made for swimming. When the tide is out, the fishing boats can't get in, so they are either out to sea or parked along the shore. Here the sea is so calm, it reflects the sky like a huge mirror. The sand at this stretch of shore is quite compact, so it's easy to walk along the beach. Let me turn around to show you the view from behind. The estuary of Sungai Ikan Mati is at the far left and in the horizon, the two hillocks is Pulau Rimau. Ever since the tsunami, a number of breakwaters have been built along the shore. One of them is right in front of us, jutting out into the sea. Let's walk over there. These trees are called Pokok Ketapang. Their English name is Indian Amun, while their scientific name, also derived from the Malay name, is the Minalia Katapa. They are very common in Penang and especially along the seaside. As we walk along the coast, it's common that we come across streams that run into the sea. This one is almost like a drain. As long as they are small enough, I will be able to leap over them. But if I come across a river that's too wide to leap across, I will have to do a detour. Okay, let's take a leap. And we have crossed. I'm now going to walk across this beach morning glory to get to the breakwater.
we are passing through people's backyard now. I wonder how it's like to have a house with the backyard opening out to the sea. It must be fantastic. The drawback here is that the sea isn't suitable for swimming. If it is, it would be perfect. This place looks like a seaside restaurant or in the midst of becoming one. Not sure. Maybe I have to come back another time, in the evening perhaps. This house looks like a temple, I think. Pramatang Damalau, or Matang as the local Chinese call it, has a mix of Malay and Chinese villagers. Yes, this is definitely a temple. This path is getting soggy. Alas, when you explore, you have to trudge across all sorts of terrain. It gives you an idea of the lengths I go through to get the photos for my website. This year, 2022, is the 19th year I've been writing my place information website. From 2003 to 2009, the site was called Asia Explorers. In 2009, I started the Penang Travel Tips website and is still by that name today. Throughout those years, I could only interact with you, my reader, through still photographs and written text. But now, through this YouTube channel, I can communicate directly with you in my own voice. So it's a whole new level of intimacy. The people living here has pretty nice cars. So, it's not correct to assume that the people in Permatang Damala are poor. There are possibly many business owners living here. In front of us is a popular curry fish head restaurant, though to be honest, I have not eaten there before. I've only heard about it. And on the left is Pusat Perkhidmatan Nelayan Setempat. This is one of the centers set up by the Penang state government to disseminate information and organize activities with the locals. Perhaps the most important information which the locals need to receive directly from the state government is regarding the Penang South Islands. In a future video, I will get someone who has the knowledge about the Penang South Islands to explain it to us. But for now, I can tell you in brief that this is a massive project to create three man-made islands off the south coast. The PPSN Centre keeps in close touch with local fishermen to give them accurate details of the project, to alleviate any fears they may have about it, and to articulate improvements to their life that the project will bring. And what's my opinion of the Penang South Islands? As someone who has studied and researched Penang for decades, I am in full support of it. In fact, I regard it as essential for Penang's future. It will not only improve the lives of Penang people, including the local fishermen, but rather paradoxically, it will enable better protection of nature and the environment in the long run. But how is that possible? The truth is, at times, it is essential to develop in order to protect. On the other hand, the fear of development will lead to further degradation of our natural environment. When we uplift the people's standard of living, not just for a small group of people, but of the whole population, providing them with better education and job options, it will lead to reduced dependency on living off the land. The less we are to depend on living off the land, 
the less likely are we to overfish and deplete our natural resources. What we need is to provide the local fishermen with better, more sustainable ways to fish and at the same time other job opportunities. With more efficient ways to fish, we don't need more fishermen. Those who opt for other job opportunities may leave the profession. And with fewer people working the land, there will be less trash left behind as well. It's all made possible with the implementation of the PSI project. On the other hand, if you are fearful of development and do not develop when we should, then the local fishermen will continue to be mired in poverty and in order to survive, we will overfish and deplete the environment. In matters of survival, the environment takes a back seat. It is so when it improves the overall standard of living and gives the locals more job options. For these reasons, I fully comprehend what the Penang state government is trying to do and I hope that the entire state population will understand and appreciate the importance of the Penang South Islands project. Okay now, let's continue our walk exploring the coastline of Pumatang Damalaut. Right in front of me is another seaside restaurant. I look forward to trying it one day with my friends. I think it is nice to sit here in the evening, enjoying a meal with the breeze coming in. Let's climb down to the shore again. It's quite a nice beach we have here at Permatang Damalaut. If only the seabed weren't muddy, it would be perfect. As you can see, there's a lot of trash here. It's usually the case, the more direct contact people have with the environment, the more trash they leave behind. If you stand here, you can often see the planes coming in towards the Penang International Airport. And if you are arriving in Penang by plane, this stretch of beach is one of your first sights of Penang Island. So now let me take you on a walk here through this video so that you can explore this place without doing the walk yourself. If you enjoy virtual walks like this, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And hit the notification bell so that I can keep you informed every time I release a new video.
I always get a bit nervous whenever I have to pass through places with dogs. I will simply continue walking, ignoring them as I do, even when they are barking at me. Judging from the number of fishing boats lined up along the shore, I would say that there's still a sizable number of people who work here as fishermen. My desire is for them to have a better life and more job options, not just for themselves, but also for their children and their children's children. Those who want to continue life as fishermen should be given training and equipment for more efficient and sustainable fishing. While those who aspire to loftier heights should receive the opportunity. Just because a person's parents or grandparents are fishermen, we should not narrow his career choice to that, but give him chance to explore other ways to earn a living. I can see here that the locals do maintain the cleanliness of the beach. The dry leaves have been raked into the hips. I have earlier said that the more direct contact people have with the environment, the more likely trash will accumulate. But the locals on this stretch of beach at Permatang Damalau have just proven me wrong. As long as there are civic minded people, the beach will be cleaned regularly. In front of us is a breakwater built to protect the mouth of Sungai Permatang Damalaut. We will climb onto the revetment at the breakwater. Okay, up, up we go. Can you hear it? A plane is coming in to land. There it is. We are like two worlds apart the modern world of the international airport and the old world of this fishing village. Here we are, standing on the revetment at the mouth of Sungai Permatang Damalaut. It's an almost silent world, broken only by the lapping waves, the occasional call of birds and the thundering of landing planes. And this, my friend, is the southern coast of Penang Island.
That's the mouth of the canalized Sungai Permatang Damalaut. It used to flow through the village of the same name, but now the village has been relocated and it now flows through airport land. is the age-old scene of the fisherman and his boat. We will walk from here to the main road, which is Jalan Permatang Damalau. In the past, the road passed through the village of Permatang Damalau, but since the late 1970s, it now cuts through airport land. The river is lined with piers for boats to land. They are called Bagan. We can see Jalan Permatang Damalaut right up ahead. The area on both sides of the road is fenced off as airport land. In the next video, we will cross to the other side of the river and walk along the path beside the airport fencing. We will continue along the coast of Permatang Damalau to reach the next settlement which is Permatang Tepi Laut. I hope you will join me as we continue our exploration and discovery through these narrated walks. So that's the wrap for this video. If you enjoy it, please give it a like, share it, subscribe to this channel and do hit the notification bell. And I look forward to bringing you another video very soon. Until we meet again, thanks for watching.